It was a food experience that I've had. I'm gonna start this all over again because I'm fucking up. Let's do this again. Bitch, 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 bitch. Here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the best food review slash mukbang channel on the face of this fucking planet. And if you've seen other ones, they're trash. <clears throat> Today, you guys are in for a treat because we are going to be eating one of my favorite cuisines, and only until recent years that I even knew, know that this existed. We're talking about Burmese food from Myanmar, or Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, B -b 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 Burma. Um, <clears throat> this food is very interesting. When I first had Burmese food, I didn't know what to expect, but slowly but surely, it became one of my favorite cuisines. So we're just gonna go through some of my favorite dishes that I've eaten from the Burmese, Myanmarese peoples. Y'all ready for this? First dish up, let's go. Today's first contender is tea leaf salad. Oh, my friends, you guys are in for a treat. Now, I'm not sure if this is actually eaten as a meal or if it's like a bar food snack or if it's like some kind of cultural thing. Any people from Myanmar, if you can enlighten me on tea leaf salad, please let me know. But I'm just gonna give you guys a few pieces of informaciones as they say in Spanish, about tea leaf salad. Now, tea leaf salad consists of a lot of different things. You're gonna taste a lot of nuttiness because yes, there are like nuts, I believe, fried in oil. But the main component that you'll see in this, aside from all the other stuff, is this piece of elephant poop on the side. This is fermented tea leaves. Now, don't be scared, my friends, because I know it looks like a bird shitted this out of its ass, and then we're gonna use it as food. You know, Asian people, we do some weird shit. But Burma, I believe, or Myanmar, uh, is one of the few areas where they actually eat the leaves and not just steep it for tea and for, for drinking purposes. And when I first saw this, I wasn't sure what I was going to expect when I eat, uh, ate this, but I gotta tell you, like I always say with food, one of my favorite things on earth. So let's prep this, my friends. We are gonna take these cute little limes, you know, these little delicious little limes, and you're gonna squeeze the motherfucker on there. Pop, pop, pop. I love limes. Limes over lemons for me. It's my shit. Yeah. You know why limes are better? Because when you get a shitty car, you don't call it a lime, you call it a fucking lemon. Ooh, 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 ooh. When you get this in a restaurant too, by the way, the presentation will be a lot better. You'll see it, you know, pushed off to the side or they'll organize all the nuts and the tomatoes and everything else. But I got it to go just to show you guys. So you're just gonna mix all this stuff together. The flavors that you're get, gonna get is gonna be fish sauce. You're gonna get these fried nuts. Um, I'm not sure, it might be peanuts or uh, what do you call those? What do you call those things? Mung beans or or whatever? I don't know. This is, this is one of those cuisines I really don't have too much knowledge about. I just know it's bomb as shit. Tomatoes in there, cabbage as well, fish sauce, sesame oil. And you'll be surprised how delicious it is. I doubt this is really that healthy, but I'm not really worried about that. Not all salads have to be healthy as hell. Sometimes it just has to be fucking delicious. I personally like this with a nice bazir, also known as beer for you laymans. <laughs> but there we go, nice and mixed. As I just get a little. It's always amazing. It's gonna have a little bit of a kick to it because there are, because there is chili in there, but that fish sauce, which if you're Asian, you always love, is gonna add that, <clears throat> as I always say, umami. It's that next sixth sense level of taste. Crunchy cabbage. Oh man. And the fried nuts. Mm. It's gonna, oh my God. It was like heat, you get that bright lime in there. And the tea leaf is what really sets it off for me. I know when you're thinking about like fermented food, some of you might be turned off by it, but when it comes to Asian food, that we do use a lot of fermented vegetables, specific, you know, specifically Koreans, like kimchi. Kimchi is a fermented cabbage. Um, but have this and you won't be disappointed. And I'm talking about texture and flavor here. Oh man, when you eat dishes like this, you don't miss meat. And that's what I love about Asian foods. There's actually a lot of like vegetarian, vegan slash pescatarian, and well in this sense because they use fish sauce dishes, 
that don't require for you to have a huge piece of protein to be satisfied with your meal. This is obviously something that's not gonna be a meal per se, but if you're starting off your meal with this, you're having a drink, you're kicking it with a bunch of friends, and you just want a snack, this right here, It's interesting because when I go eat at places, the last thing I usually want is a salad. I just think Asian people just do salads better than white people. I don't know, American people. I feel like salads isn't something that people create in Asia just to be like, oh, it's a healthier version of something. It's just more like, this This can be the main dish. It's like a flavor bonanza, like it doesn't stop. It's spicy, salty. And then you have that cabbage that just soaks up all the flavor and all the seasonings. And that, my friends, is tea leaf salad. Oh God, I spit on you guys. Next up, my friends, is a very popular and apparently very typical dish that you'll see in a lot of Burmese cuisine. I believe this is pronounced J-O, even though it's spelled K-Y-A-Y space O. You know how Asian people be. They always like to make shit confusing. <laughs> this right here, is bomb as fuck. And if you're a protein lover, you're gonna definitely love this. I got the pork version of it. Inside this, you will see pieces of like Chinese bok choy. Uh, this right here is that pork, that ground pork that they have. This is like a fish ball, I believe, or some sort of that. Quail eggs and tofu on the side. And you could have this either wet, so it's kind of done in a broth like pho, I guess you would say, or you could have the soup on the side. I'm always told to get the soup on the side because they said that it's way more flavorful than getting it without that. And over here, you of course have to have your hot sauce because I think people in Burma just like spicy food, as you can tell, because I'm sweating as a motherfucker. First off, before we even put that hot sauce on in there, ooh, spices. And also, if you notice on this, there's going to be pieces of fried garlic. Yes. Let's have a little bit of everything here. A little bit of vegetable. A little bit of that. Oh, that noodle pull action right there. Mm hmm So fucking good. I love the fried garlic and that soy flavor sauce that they put on there. Um, me, I definitely need some hot sauce on this BZ. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. That smells spicy as fuck. Um, <laughs> We're gonna dodge those little fucking devil dick chili peppers. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. You know, with the soup too, I've seen people drink it separately. Bomb, and I also see people pour it on top. Me, I think I'm gonna pour some on here. Just to moisten it up like that. Now, we're talking heat, sweet, and a little bit of spice, but this is definitely a really bomb savory dish. And if you've never, oh, quail egg, of course. I love quail eggs, man. That's the shit. I need a more spice up on this bitch, man. I like to have my shit come out my asshole later. <clears throat> yes, these delicious noodles have absorbed that broth that I just poured on there. Oh yeah. You definitely need this vinegary hot sauce with this because without it, I mean, it's very delicious, but you have fried garlic, you already have the noodles and the pork. It's really heavy, 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 heavy. And then when you add the spice to it, it just kind of, it, it, it mixes it up a little bit. You need that heat and you need that vinegar just to always balance out like fattiness and crazy saltiness. Oh yeah, let's get into this piece of pork right here. Mm. And that piece of pork too isn't just like ground up pork. It's, they flavor it. I taste like ginger, I taste garlic. A little more hot sauce on this. Oh man, this is, I feel like this is a dish I could eat almost every day. A lot of protein, bunch of flavor, and who doesn't like noodles? There's a reason why I can't do like keto diets and all that other stuff is because 
I love noodles and rice. Carbs are my shit. The cool thing about this rice noodle that they're using, it literally absorbed every bit of sauce that they put in there. It just soaked it all up. So every time you eat it, like I said before, flavor bomb. Let's get a little more soup in this. Delicious. Let's get that quail egg up in this. I'm waiting. <gasps> no. And let's add some hot sauce on that. Oh. And. Bomb as fuck. Next up, my friends, is a must have, must have, must have. Oh, shit. <laughs> Must have. <clears throat> when you go to a Burmese place, make sure that you get the mohinga. What is mohinga, my friend? It is a catfish soup with noodles inside. Now, the prevalent flavor in this is going to be all those choices of herbs and spices that you'll see in a lot of the food that you have. I believe it's made with the fish paste as well. And they put catfish obviously in there too. And that catfish water flavors the soup. You'll see hints of like turmeric, I believe, um, shallots, garlic, onions. It's just gonna be all of those delicious flavors melded together that put you in a very happy place. Now, Mohinga, um, it might even be a breakfast food. I'm not quite sure about that as well. I'm just saying a lot of information that I don't know about. And then you guys are probably gonna correct me in the comments, you fucking fact police bitches. But please do, I actually do wanna know. Um, fried garlic as well, cilantro on the side, lime, the spices, and of course eggs, and always add the lime in there. Like that. Taste the soup after you mix it up. like that and as you can see there's spices on the side that i'm going to mix in the soup and this is my shit flavorful flavorful as hell you you do taste the catfish and mohinga too you'll see it come in different colors as well this one is more brown i mean i think typically i've seen it like this but i've also seen mohinga more on the reddish orange side Catfish is something too that's like a hit or miss for people. Some people don't like catfish because it has like that muddy, it kind of tastes like the, the environment that they stay around, which is at the bottom of like freshwater, like ponds or fucking lakes. But I actually like it. Especially with Mohinga. So bomb, savory. Yep, yep. Mm hmm Could you get a bite of the noodles? And then you get some of that egg too on the side and that cilantro to brighten it up. Oh yeah. The mohinga broth too is thicker. Than a lot of other like noodle soups that you probably used to. But I like it because it clings to everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The garlics and the shallots. Garlic and shallot too. Ultimate combo, by the way. I feel like if you cook garlic and onions or shallots together, it already smells like you know what the fuck you're doing. Sometimes back in the day, when I have a girl come over, I just pretend like I'm cooking and just throw garlic and onions into a pan. And she's like, oh my God, you're such an amazing cook. I'm like, no, I'm not, bitch. Got you. <laughs> I'm sloppy. You'll eat this, then you'll be like, whoa. I don't know what category to place this into. It just doesn't taste like any other food. Well, maybe it kind of has like similarities to me, in my opinion anyways, to a lot of Indonesian food that I've had. But even then, it's way different from that as well. I said I wasn't going to finish this. I'm probably going to finish this. At this point, you don't really need the fork and the spoon, in my personal opinion. You just, it's all sauce and delicious. You can see all that flavor juice right there.
drink and eat it at the same time. Like so. This is the last dish that we will be eating. This, my friends, uh, I don't actually know how to pronounce it, but I'm guessing it's oh no. Oh no noodle. <laughs> but it's a chicken noodle soup hmm. made in a coconut chicken broth. Typically, I heard it's made with wheat noodles. I don't even know what that should taste like, but we have eggs in here once again. This delicious fry stuff, which I have no idea. And that reoccurring, like, I don't know, it's mung beans. I, I, I call it a I guess a bean fritter type of thing, which is that fry stuff that you saw in the tea leaf salad, you saw it in the, um, the catfish noodle soup as well, which is these cute little delicious crunchy bits right there. Cilantro, spices, and this creamy, creamy soup. I like coconut soup based broths and you'll see that with like, you know, Thai coconut soup. So I was like, familiar flavor, why not give it a go? And we're gonna bite into this right now. See how all that like soup and broth clings to the noodles? Fucking good. Yup, that's what I'm talking about. It's very coconut forward, obviously, but when you look at a dish and it's bright yellow, bright red, you're thinking spicy, it's gonna be super in your face. It's not, it's extremely mild. And kind of like with Thai food, like Thai food, it tastes as intense as it looks. This, on the other hand, it does not. So if you're scared when you look at this and you think that it's just gonna be too much for your palate, trust me, give this a go. And you will be pleasantly surprised. Grab yourself some egg. Get those little pieces of chicken. that fried bean fritter. It's so, it's good, it's just, it tastes like, um, kinda tastes like the breading on the outside of a fried piece of chicken, you know? It's not a part of the main dish, but it's still one of like your favorite parts of fried chicken. Like fried chicken is what it is because of that outer crust. I mean, yeah, there's the meat, but you want that crunchiness in. Man. flavors are so layered, you know? I could taste a little bit of everything that goes into it. You know, and then, and then we're talking about the same culprits here, right? Shallots, cilantro, fish sauce. And this is a lot of flavors that you'll see in Asian dishes. And if you like those type of flavors, you're definitely going to love Burmese food. But they somehow do it in a way where, I don't know, it's kind of like the flavors are forward, but it's not in your face, you know? Because when I have like Thai coconut soup, it's just like coconut milk blasted, but whatever it is with the spices that they put, put in this, it kind of balances out that extreme coconut flavor. And you're tasting the fried fritter. You're tasting the chicken and the broth. You're tasting a little bit of the spice that's thrown in right at the end when you mix it up to make it red. These egg noodles soak up all that deliciousness. just become a really happy camper. Cool thing is with this place, with the chicken, they only use thigh meat. I love thigh meat when it comes to chicken because it's never dry. It has the most flavor. Have a little bit more of the soup. <clears throat> and that's what I'm talking about. I, I would normally finish this here, but I'm full as hell. I just ate three dishes and um, give Burmese food a try. If you do, let me know what you think about it. My God, actually, I'm gonna get one more bite. I'm fucking around here. I don't know what's wrong with me. Come on now, David. Give them, give them that noodle slurp that they deserve. Oh, yeah. If you guys want me to try some other type of food, let me know. Let's get it on there. I'm thinking about having some East Africa food on this because I never had it before. But um, let me know in the comments below, everybody. I'll see you next time on the best 
food review mug. I'm saying it as if like I got a plaque for it or something. I'm, I'm just, I'm really full.